Hi guys and welcome to the Monday night stream. Tom is away tonight. Uh, he is doing some work, so I wanted to do a quick stream and talk about some of the work I've done on Rocket Skyman and brainstorm some of the things that I'm gonna do next. So I spent a, a good chunk of a weekend planning some of the uh, user inter interface and menus and HUDs and all that stuff. So I'm gonna walk you through my mockups. So if I enable, you can see I have like this giant uh, PSD file with a bunch of folders. So HUD uh, shows you basically the elements that are on screen at all times. And I'm creating, trying to arrange it to uh, fit a grid. So I have this central element, which is the, the distance that the player travels. We haven't yet discussed whether it should be meters or percentage of the certain level. And then, because it's the main element, it's in the center and it's above the other elements. Now, secondary uh, elements of, of this HUD are the, the tokens that the player collects. And you can see this grid can be better, uh, like, uh, better oriented by just, you know, placing this uh, here and uh, centering it with other elements. But this is my kind of a very initial pass, so I'm gonna tweak these things down the road once I actually, well, once we actually finalize what these elements are. But uh, yeah, we have tokens and we have the power-ups. So these are the three elements that are being displayed on this screen, on the HUD. Now, when player dies, we have a summary screen. So summary screen, uh, you can see what it's gonna be is basically a message uh, and that can be randomly kind of generated. We can have a list of predefined death messages and that can be showed here. Then there's a summary, how long the player traveled, tokens collected, if there is a new record, we can show like displayed with an icon like this. Uh, and then there is like the crash replace and the total score. And I went for this kind of, uh, I don't know how exactly to describe this art style, but it's sort of like a paper um, tickets, almost like a, 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 a hand cut uh, pieces of paper that have this kind of rough edges uh, and uh, everything is kind of on a slant and very organic and kind of fun looking. And this uh, this art style was inspired directly by the typeface that I chose. Uh, I'm not sure what, don't remember the name of it. Let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a Gal Galindo, is the name of the typeface. And I just liked how it, it looks clean and fun at the same time. It's nothing, you know, crazy and disgusting like, uh, you know, Comic Sans or something like that. But. Um, I liked it, it felt like it was matching the mood that I was going for and based on that I kind of put together these backgrounds. And this is a mock-up, so uh, by no means this is the final version that's going to be in-game. Uh, I'm going to go into Illustrator and actually design it in vectors because uh, I prefer to design any interface related stuff in vectors. So. We actually, like if down the road we need to appraise it for iPad, we don't need to redesign it, we just, you know, expert uh, vectors at a higher resolution. Now, um, there's also restart and respawn buttons, they're at the very bottom. Uh, the inspiration for those came kind of from the uh, pickup buttons when you're somebody is calling you, at least on the iPhone, there's a, this round button that you press and drag to the side. So restart and respawn. And I was thinking press and hold would be cool to make it so that you don't accidentally trigger trigger them. So we have the little tooltip that says hold to restart. For refueling, uh, I want to have an, a widget that pops up when you refuel to show you the progress of refueling. Um, also for the shield, uh, basically the way the, the, this works is whenever you have a pickup, for every pickup I want an indication on the character and in the top right corner. So 
when the shield is activated you'll see this orb around the player but then there's a countdown in the top right corner and the shield is of course it's gonna flicker when when it's about to expire and that type of stuff helmet uh, i say like i still have this the same kind of a uh, indication in the corner but i was thinking it would be cool if it would make the head bigger almost like a bobble head now for the main menu i envision something like this basically a very simple grid um, and uh, it, it's it's a subject uh, to uh, it, it, it might change down the road because uh, i'm not quite sure whether we want the credits button or top scores needs to be here or at the bottom or whether it's even called top scores or we should call it something else but the main idea is that you can continue you can watch your replays and you have a play button which once you play it the reason it's so big is that it can actually turn into uh, kind of like a three buttons so if i basically you press play and then it becomes this kind of a, a horizontal slider where you can choose different levels, if that makes sense. And I haven't had a chance to really test this layout on the device, and once once I do that, this it, it, it's going to change quite a bit because you know one thing one thing is to have it in uh, on a giant Photoshop screen, and another thing is to look at it on a device at like this scale. And if I re, re enable it. It, it can become a little bit too small to work with, but we'll see. So icons, I, I also experimented with some, like the, the titles for the main menu. Uh, and we have, I like this guy the most so far, because it's got the actual Rocky D. Skyman uh, as a part of it. We also have a bunch of icons for different power-ups, so helmet, shield, stopwatch, fuel tank, rewind, ethanol, and parachute. Uh, so that concludes uh, the, the, the UI work that I've done. Uh, so now look, let's look at the level design. So, okay, where's, where's this thing? All right. Um, so this level is going to be uh, mainly vertical, well, and by mainly I mean it's going to be 100% vertical. We, we travel from the very bottom to the very top. Um, I And the idea, Tom and I had a discussion and what we came up with is that it would be, we want this level to be pretty big, like 1000 meters. And right now if I press play, and I go vertical, I think G is a good mod, yeah, okay. So if I travel, you can see 1000 meters is a lot of meters. It's, it's, it's a quite a distance. So I need to cover a lot of ground in a very, like how do you approach something like this where you, Dyson, sorry, the cat is loud. So how do we approach something like like this, and uh, without you know going crazy and kind of while still staying on on top of the like uh, the the challenge is like it has to have a certain degree of consistency. It has to start simple and then become more difficult uh, as you go. And um, right now we have maybe like 600 meters actually like if i move the player start to the beginning it would help actually instead of moving it to the beginning i'll just move it to the very top and just fall down and see what the value is so right now it's, we are at zero meters and we're at the very end and if i start falling The meters don't quite align with the in-game units, so that's why I'm doing it this one. Oh, 
Okay, so 767 meters. So close to one kilometer. We got we got uh, 300 more meters to go, basically. And if I select this player start, you can kind of come like it's seven seventy-seven thousand. So you could kind of convert it to meters. Okay, but. The thing is, laying something out like uh, laying something like laying out something like this is very similar to creating um, a racing game, for example, or layout for a racing track. We know that we need a start and a finish. We know that depending on a racing game, like it's it's gonna have some obstacles in between. So basically. The way I would approach it is by establishing the starting point, the end point, and then placing all the filler content in between. And then once I have the filler content, what I'm gonna do is split it into chunks, and you already uh, can you can see we have streaming all these things, but I'll get that. I'm trying. Like look in here or something. Yeah, sorry, cat is loud. We can use these uh, streaming volumes as uh, basically dividers, and we can play test each uh, each of these zones and really try to customize it and make it more interesting to a player, as opposed to just a bunch of randomly generated obstacles. So for starters, let's establish the endpoint, which is going to be I have this asset that I'm using to establish the end. And we're gonna place it exactly at uh, 100,000 centimeters. Now, what we could do, uh, what I would like to know is how long I can fly on a single, how far I can fly on a single fuel tank. And knowing this distance will let me will give me some information to place these uh, uh, the, the the fuel stations uh, and the reason I need to know this is because you know you can't travel without the fuel in this game so I have to have fuel stations and I can sort of eyeball it by looking at um, at like how far they are apart uh, so if I take this guy for example and crank up my snapping to a thousand units and move it one two three so about three thousand units apart this is where I have my uh, my charging stations here and here one two three four so three to four thousand units and I can use this as the, as the ballpark. And what I can also do is uh, go somewhere up here, grab a few charging stations, like this, and just duplicate them over. Because they're gonna be pretty far out, and uh, I'm gonna be tweaking them. Uh, like player won't be able to to tell that it, that they've been duplicated over. And then we can also just grab more, and you can see we can just offset them and just kind of put a few stations here. And now suddenly we went from not having anything here, now we can actually travel all the way to the end of the level by just placing the, kind of giving the player the means of travel. Now, what what kind of obstacles are we gonna have here? And I, I don't know yet. And something like this, I would actually, what I would do is take some screenshots from not the front but from the left maybe 
yeah, kind of take some screenshots in this view and let's make it good. Uh, Cat is going crazy. Yeah, and um, basically take screenshots from this view, take them to Photoshop, and actually just do a layout in 2D. Uh, but for the time being, I want some placeholder filler type of as uh, obstacles. So let's just grab chunks, uh, and I'm probably gonna. I want to limit it to, to just platforms because I don't, I don't want my placeholder stuff that I do like a filler dictate the, the actual puzzle design. All I want is just obstacles. So let's see. Let's. I'm gonna select a bunch and duplicate over. Mm, I'm not sure what I'm exactly duplicating over. Oh, they're right there. The grab. All right, and now you can see we have some very basic platforms that we already uh, like. I already spent time uh, placing before, but now I I have a starting point. That's all I need here. And with the starting point, I can randomize them more. If you really want the box. That's why I have uh, I like having streams in the morning when Cat Cat is uh, just just had his breakfast and he's quiet and calm and just sleeping. Cats, man, how do they work? Okay, and. interfere with my previous layouts. I'm gonna revisit this this entire uh, this entire um, blueprint uh, the, the rings thing. Not sure how valuable it is in terms of gameplay. Don't, don't feel like it's fun enough. <laughs> All right so now by just kind of very quickly slapping these platforms in place, I actually have the rest of the level. Uh, now let's grab, let's, let's actually test our theory and see if we can travel to the very end without running out of fuel. I'm not gonna die here because these are just very basic platforms. There's really nothing here to, that threatens my safety. But once we, we actually add our obstacles and our uh, traps, it's gonna get much, much, much more difficult. I'm not gonna have as much fun as I am right now. Well, actually, 
actually hopefully the opposite because I'm not having too much fun. This is boring. But I want to make sure that I can reach the platform. And I can. So this will be the end of the game. And you can see it says level complete uh, when I land on it. Awesome. So from here, now the actual design comes in. And uh, I can use a side view or I can actually grab, let's see if I can drive a camera actor and use that. Because with the camera, I can actually see the background. If I place it inside. My minus 180, we can, let's see, orthographic. Perspective, but then just adjust the perspective to make it really flat. Sure. Yeah. Wow, she's obno he's obnoxious today. Okay, so we have a camera, we can pan it and take screenshots. So that's cool. Um, I can just do something like this. Sun kind of gets in the way. I can just hide this. Uh, haven't filled out this as well. So, should I kill the sun? Let's set it to one. Yeah, for the time being, I can just uh, tone down the sun so I can see better without the bloom and everything. Alright, so. Could probably zoom out as well. Because we don't need to be too close to plan these. And I'm gonna use high resolution screenshot to take a few screenshots. Okay, we start from here. This is our top platform. So three chunks. Basically, just gonna stitch them together. So this is cool, 
And I mean, yes, we've got three sons, but it doesn't matter. This is just a bad bro. Um, so what I can do now, merge them together. And from here, I can kind of just, uh, I, I know how the game plays at this point. So for me, it's easy enough to uh, just kind of grab the screenshot and start thinking, okay, so well, we have the platform here, we have a platform here, so naturally the player will want to move in the linear direction. Let me just grab my tablet here. So what I can do is I can grab assets and kind of very quickly duplicate them over to create obstacles. Maybe we can place a fan here, which I don't have it in my in, in this set of images, but I can actually if we go to the engine and take a picture of. fan that we can place. So if the fan if the player is going from here to here maybe we can place a fan in the middle. So the fan will travel up and down and it will disrupt if you go here the fan blows at you you crash against the platform right so suddenly player needs to look for a different option so let's duplicate the fan and what if we had one that was also placed in here so now both of these paths are kind of crap because you have to fly around and you might end up in a uh, running out of fuel and what we could also add okay well now you're forced to go here or you can still go around and burn more fuel um, and right around here it'll probably help to have a list of all of our obst obstacles handy so I can see what else I can place here uh, I and I will do so, but I think I don't really have time right now to really spend time on it. But this kind of gives you an idea how I go um, about planning a set of obstacles. And the reason I, I like doing it in 2D is well, just like with everything else, it's much faster iteration. So. Uh, for example, down the road, I want to have closer to the end but not all the way close maybe somewhere in between i want to have a set of basically a horizontal wall that in order in order to get past it you need to open a gate and uh, there would be kind of two sets of motors or engines that need to be powered by a battery so in order to open it you need to fly up here charge the battery then fly up there and charge, charge the battery and then in the middle would be the gate that would open up and let you in kind of this thing uh, so but in order to do that We need a clear indication that there is a battery here. Let's just grab a bright color. And again, like I'm gonna spend more time refining the graphics, what it would actually look like, and building a, a, a concept in a model. Right now, all I care really is the flow of the level. This one is kind of a multi stage objective because you have to recharge, pick up the battery open the thing, then go back, pick up another battery, open the thing. So I want it closer to the end of the level. So 
so I'm here, I get up here, I recharge. Next thing I need to do is I need to place my battery somewhere. So let's just uh, draw a quick uh, battery icon. So let's say this is my battery. And this is gonna be placed over here. The, the problem of placing it here though is player is going to see it for the first time and they're going to pick it up before they have a chance to refuel. So maybe we want them to actually get here, refuel and realize that hey, this thing requires this and uh, maybe we're going to like draw a little lightning kind of a rod here to indicate that it needs power so once it we get the battery we fly over here and we charge it but then the battery is drained so we need something and I, I don't want to have two fuel stations here, so let's just remove it. And we're gonna place a secondary battery. Maybe somewhere kind of further down type of a thing. Like out in the boonies, because we wanna kind of challenge the player. All right, and another... Th so the question is, and that's more of a gameplay design do we recharge our batteries or do we just pick the battery and it's good for one charge type of a thing so we can grab this guy place it here and i think we, we like that's something you can play test if if we treat the battery like a container that can be charged that is definitely an option. Um, we also probably want to extend this entire uh, wall chunk further out so people can just fly around it without running out of fuel and dying in a horrible way. We can build something like this. Okay, and now once you've done all this crap and you got onto the other side, it makes sense that we have a fuel station over here. Or maybe to make it slightly more challenging, we can place it more on this side. Let's do select it. And I can easily just do it right in the engine, move things around and play test them as they go, but what I'm gonna lose is the ability to work on this flow as a whole. Uh, plan it the entire level, as opposed to, like, when, if I did it in engine, I would be more focused on each individual part of the level and I would be play, test, play testing the thing 500 times. And right now it's not about perfection, it's about uh, filling up this uh, span of three screens that I have here with gameplay. And as you can see we have a pretty pretty solid uh, start starting point for uh, the midsection. So what else what else can we do quickly here? Um, We have this whole... Uh, oh, we have a new obstacle, which is a robot that kind of acts like a mine. If you're in range, it starts to follow you. So it might be cool to have a section where they will follow you and uh, if you're slow, you're dead. So let's do that. Let's create another kind of placeholder. 
graphic for a robot the robot mine give it bright red and decide where we want to place them well so maybe the first time we introduce it would be somewhere around here and this is kind of this is close to the end of the game so it's it's where the things should get challenging right so player is standing on this platform they see two unknown objects that they never encountered before and they see the fans that they were real uh, know really well at this point so one if they think that they can get around this they would fly towards the the fence and then they'll see these red spiky things going towards them so this kind of creates a very stressful scenario for a player and they would have to either escape around these platforms or try to pass through Um, so yeah, I kind of like this, it's nice, um, it's difficult yet simple, uh, ar arrangement of, of things, and once the player knows, learns what that these, uh, red rhomboids are huge pain in the ass, we can have a section where we have a crap ton of them. And this entire section could literally focus on robots following you. And somewhere here we can also add one of those spinny platforms to make things more challenging. So if I go over here and let's find one of the spinny guys. There it is. Let's take a screenshot. Doing this, another another reason of doing this is like it's very low commitment. I can just spend like 20 minutes and then I'm creating a to-do list to, for my actual layout. If this doesn't work out, I don't, I feel nothing. I, I only lost 20 minutes of my time, so it doesn't matter. But. It, it gives me a starting point for whatever else I'm gonna be doing in my in my level. So now I'm standing here refueling and all these robots are st starting to go after me. I can try to go through the spinny part and hope that the spinner is gonna protect me from the robots, which is cool. Or I can go to the left and try to fly around the, this whole deal. So, it's interesting, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cool layout, but the problem that we have here right now is that it's very heavy on the right side. We have a bunch of enemies on the right side and we have this spinny platform on the right side. So I need something on the left to balance it out and kind of create something some more interest here so maybe on a on the left we we can place a platform that moves up and down and i actually have one of those right here so i'm gonna take a screenshot once again just throw it into my mock-up Yeah, so this guy would kind of travel up and down like this and it would create additional kind of uh, interest and challenge for the player so they don't feel like if they go to the left all their life problems are going to be solved because they wouldn't be because it's a game it doesn't solve problems okay so 
one platform is good maybe what if we had two two kind of parallel moving dudes and you can make them smaller because i think they're currently scaled a little bit too big And we can also add eh, maybe a horizontally moving platform. I'm just gonna. Oh, let's just copy paste. Do we have a horizontally moving one? Here, right here. So, it's Monday and I'm not gonna go too deep into, I'm not gonna design this entire thing, but what I wanna do next before we call it a day is I'm actually gonna test this and see how well this layout works. And I can do it by literally just going in there and using this Photoshop mockup as a reference to place things. Uh, so let's, I'm just going to move it to the other screen and go into my engine, find this, the starting point, which is this platform over here. It's kind of hard to do now that I've placed so much crap in my Photoshop file. Where's my starting point? It's not this platform, but this platform. Okay. So we can place one of our spinners, which is going to be blueprints. There's the first platform, uh, wrong place to put it. There you go. It goes around here. Scale is a little bit off, but we know that it's not going to be perfect, so we can adjust it left and right. Um, then uh, we also need our robot that follows the play around. I think it's here. Yeah, so floater BP. It's just a simple box right now. And um, you can see I'm struggling because I'm trying to place this blueprint right where on this kind of 2D plane. So if I just duplicate an existing guy and then select this uh, item and then right click and just uh, replace actor with the floater BP and I have it placed exactly where it needs to go. And then the second one goes right here and then have another one over here and then more over here You can see, like, there is no guesswork. All I'm doing is I'm just matching my Photoshop file. And uh, I can iterate on it if I need to. Okay, so let's duplicate this guy and turn it into the moving platform. So click on the moving platform, right click, replace. Okay, and moving platform has points A and point B, so I want it to end somewhere around here and start somewhere around here. And I'm also going to put a vertical platform, which is going to be this guy. 
the place. It's quite a large one. So it's gonna go here, and maybe down here. And we have two of them. So I'm gonna duplicate one, offset it, uh, make it go much slower. And in the options, I'm also gonna enable random start so they're not moving at the same uh, at the same kind of rate in, in the same locations, but they actually overlap and do some random stuff. We can do the same for this guy as well, even though it doesn't really matter, but sure. So now, uh, where is our player start? Let's, let's test our level. This is gonna be bad because uh, I haven't tested the robot. This is the fir my first time testing robots, uh, or like the floating guys. I'm sure they're gonna kill me. Actually, no, they're not gonna kill me because they can't kill you yet. I don't think Tom implemented that yet. Okay, everyone ready? Let's do this. So... You can see the, the robot thingy starts to follow me. Um, and then... These guys aren't following me. This one is. Uh, our spinner platform is moving pretty slow So there's not much challenge other than you know, I just ran out of fuel So what let's let's do something. Let's let's tweak this First of all looks like spinner platform is not oriented co correctly uh, Let's crank up the rotation speed to 50 is it the one no, that's not the one. Okay, 50. Okay, this is much better. We can also uh, make platforms rotate as well. Independent rotation, I think. Yeah, okay, so this is much more dangerous. Let's do... Let's tone it down a bit. Though. Okay, that's cool. Now these guys, let's see. Teleport distance threshold. No, oh, that's cloth. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't seem like they got uh, too many parameters exposed yet. But, which is fine. Um, I'm just gonna have to live with it, because I, I don't want to get into AI tuning, but basically these guys are gonna be much more aggressive and they're gonna follow you at a much longer distance, at least that's the hope. I'm just gonna make sure that it's not exposed anywhere. We can actually look into that on a tomorrow's stream. But yeah, let's see. So I get here, I have spinny thing and we can tighten this up to make it a little bit more challenging uh, there's guys that follow me around we can also increase the amount of them we have here for the time being just to make it more challenging this can go closer and that's th this is this is kind of the, the the kind of kinds of tweaks that I really enjoy doing because we already have this thing that we the scenario that we designed on basically pen and paper and now we can just tweak our variables to make the layout more interesting so now we have a, a lot of floating robots and a spinny thing that's really close to the, the, the player so now i need to yeah like i would be dead by now because i touched the robot and the, ro the robots are following me and I'm starting to run out of fuel, and there's a platform, and boom, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, technically, if robots were more aggressive right now, I, like, I wouldn't be able to just fly uh, by them, and I also wouldn't be able to just sit and, and wait for them. So that's cool. Alright, guys. Um, I hope uh, this was useful. Uh, this is my general approach to designing uh, kind of very quick puzzles like this. Or not really puzzles, but more of a, uh, level flows. 
Uh, I'm gonna continue working on this tomorrow. Uh, probably do a whole one to two hour stream on this. And uh, hopefully Tom will help me to crank up the difficulty on these uh, flying boxes. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.